Thank you so much for joining us today. We are Team 1421, and we will be introducing our publication called The Image. We had the pleasure of creating a zine that told the story of how we could possibly change the image of how people are seen in publications and advertisements today. Um, my name is Jasmine Childs, and I acted as the creative director for this project. We had authors Pratash Patel and Colin Lofton, and statistician Justin Harden. We identified many problems when it came to body image and how the advertisement industry utilizes men and women both in negative stereotypical ways. How many boys and girls are looking and viewing commercials, uh, magazines, or many different publications where they see advertisements and see something or, or an image that is unrealistic, something that they can only wish and hope to be and in reality cannot achieve or is difficult to achieve. So we did a good job in addressing these issues. Um, we also want society to accept and to start to believe and not to believe these stereotypes that are shown in advertisement. Um, we do not want men and women to judge themselves based off of these impossible standards that advertisements display. Okay, so first, the first part of our zine talked about the main problem that we we're trying to tackle. And then after that, we talked about how this problem impacts society. And then after that, we gave certain examples of advertisements and went on to analyze them. Following that, we wrote an article talking about how we as a society can change how we view advertisements and react to advertisements. Following that, we we conducted several interviews and put those in the zine along with survey, survey results in the form of graphs and charts. And finally, we concluded by listing our references. Okay, so the first article of our zine was called The Hidden Nature of the Advertising Industry. And this article introduced the reader to the problem that we were trying to address. It is estimated that the average person ex is exposed to thousands of advertisements each day. And we often think that these advertisements only enter our short-term memory. But unfortunately, unfortunately, they do more than that. They ultimately cause us to think a lot more about how we look and hold ourselves to much higher standards. Um, our culture is filled with images that tell us not only how we should behave, but also how we should be. And this article talked about how people are trying to look like the people that they are seeing in advertisements. Men are trying to obtain that stereotypical image of being muscular, clean shaven, and having a chiseled jaw, while women are often trying to be thin and light skinned. And we asked the readers, have I ever tried to change the way that I look to match the way someone appears in an advertisement? And do I judge people differently based on the standards set by advertisements? And these questions help the readers sort of connect to the problem and relate more to the issue while reading the zine. And the main point of this article was that the advertising industry is cunningly promoting the stereotypes that men and women have to look this way in order to be considered attractive. And the second article was called Advertising's Effect on Body Image. And this article talks about the negative effects that advertisements have on an individual's body image. And women and young girls are affected most in this regard. The problem is that models in these advertisements have had the images edited a number of times through programs such as Photoshop. And a study in 1980 examined that the ideal image in Playboy magazine and Miss America pageant from 1959 to 1978 found that the average weights of women in those two groups are significantly less than the weights of the general public. And another example 
from back in the day, about 1980, was a survey and that found that 45% of households had someone that was on a diet, and 76% of women in the 20 to 50 age group dieted for cosmetic reasons. And this is very important because they didn't respond that they were dieting for health images, so it sort of illustrates how they are dieting because of the images that they are seeing in the advertisements. And unfortunately, when women and young girls fail to achieve this look, it takes their self-esteem to take a major blow, and they often see themselves as failure, failures because they can't achieve that certain look. This article shows that the effects sometimes drastic that advertisements have on women and young girls. It is unfortunate that they stri strive to reach an impossible standard and ultimately feel bad about themselves when they don't reach it. However, it is certainly possible to change the way that we view and feel about advertisements, and this issue is tackled in another article. Well, and the very first thing that is important to realize when criticizing advertisement of today is really getting a grip on what advertisements we view and what advertisements are seen every day and exactly what they mean. Um, in this portion of the zine, we talk about um, what we see and what is the, what Americans are looking at every single day. Um, <clears throat> one of the first things that are commonly seen are women being used as objects. Women used to sell certain sell certain high quality or low quality brands, in in order to make it more appealing, the female parts are being rendered into objects just to appease or satisfy people. Um, another thing that we see are um, is sex being used to sell. Sex is something that can be described as a sacred act or something that is, you know, important in the privacy of people's homes. However, sex is exploited. Sex is exploited in most or well, many different ads, you know, which kind of goes against the brain for both men and women and subjectifies us to these different images of what sex should be, what it could be, and what it can be. Also, advertisements are used to depict body types that are completely unrealistic for women. Um, we see in this in this portion of the zine that um, an Abercrombie and Fitch model is seen modeling a bathing suit. And if I were a young girl or someone who shops at Abercrombie and Fitch, which is mostly women from about the age of 16 to about 26, 27, I'm thinking that my body has to be this way or has to be in a certain rapport in order to wear this bathing suit or in order to buy these clothes. And if my body does not fit that mold, it would be not necessarily instinctive, but it would almost seems as if it is in my best interest to make my body add up to that of the models in which it doesn't, in which it, it may not be able to. These ads are a constant reminder every day that America is placing certain stipulations on sexuality, women, and also um, the body types of just people in which we don't necessarily have to abide by these stipulations, but this is almost, it seems, is what the general population as a whole is expecting. They are expecting us to be more sexually explicit. They are expecting us to use parts of our bodies to, um, as objects in a sexual or possibly non-sexual way, and they are expecting us to embody these uh, these body types that are in no way, shape, or form believable and or achievable for people such as myself. Okay, so the next article we wrote was entitled How We Can Change. 
And this article really looks at the societal impact of advertisements and how it's not an easy problem to fix. Um, so in it, we kind of examine two possibilities, um, two different methods of how we can really impact the lives of women and how we can change the uh, industry standard of advertising today um, as far as it relates to sexism and how women are often portrayed and stereotyped in ads. Uh, so the first approach we wrote about was more of a top-down approach. Um, in this, we envision uh, something like the government passing uh, restrictions and laws um, as far as the content of what advertisements can have in them, um, specifically to how they're allowed to portray women or um, body type, uh, body image, stereotypes about women. Um, and so we felt that if you know there's some regulation to how advertisements are made, that it's possible that this would affect some change. Um, however, the issue with this is that it doesn't really connect with the people. Um, it's more focused on the advertisements themselves. And so without the, the mass support for changes like this, um, and the fact that advertisers are so good at getting their point across, we felt that in the end this might not be very effective. Um, likely because advertisers would simply find another way to get their point across and skirt these kind of rules. You know, it's hard to, to really encompass every single type of advertising um, that's an issue, and so we feel that there would always be some sort of loopholes um, present. So the second approach we wrote about uh, was different, and it was kind of the opposite. We want to start at the bottom and really have like a grassroots approach to affecting change. Um, and what this would involve is really educating the public about these problems. Um, you know, we'll have, like in our zine, we have examples of advertisements that are kind of stereotypical. Um, and so we feel that this education part of this method um, is very, uh, very important as far as getting real change done. Um, because when you do have the support of the people and and they know what they're looking for, um, it becomes a lot easier to discount you know the advertisements. And oftentimes when you have real issues that you know multiple uh, groups of people and there's a widespread group that really cares about what's happening, change is often affected because they you know they'll boycott. Burger King or their boycott Abercrombie and Fitch because of their advertisements and how they are portraying. So in the end, if there was sort of a boycott, you know, businesses are making advertisements because that's the best way to sell their product. But if it's no longer the best way to sell their product, we feel that they change their advertising to reflect that. Um, and this would help eliminate the stereotypical uh, portrayal of women in advertising simply because it's no longer a good business decision anymore. So the next part of our zine focused on some interviews that we conducted uh, with different people um, and we asked them a couple of different questions. Uh, the first question that we asked was um, just kind of off the top of their head what were some of the ways that they felt the advertising industry stereotyped women? Um, and we got a couple good answers, and they're all fairly similar um, as far as they felt like sex um, really was a big issue. Um, they felt that you know women are objectified in that, but at the same time, they also felt like they stereotyped men, but not in the same way. You know, they they stereotype men as you know the lazy slobs or you know whatever. They're they're funny commercials. They're not necessarily having a large impact on you know, men's body images. Um, so the next question leading into that was how we felt that um, how these negative advertisements can affect people. I mean, the overwhelming majority seemed like they felt there was more of an impact on females. Um, and rather than males, the females, I think they said, were 
more likely to be impacted because they're bombarded um, by those stereotypes in every single advertisement. Um, you know, lots of advertisements, regardless if they're selling food, which everybody has to eat, they usually have some kind of uh, objectification of women. Um, the next interview question we asked was, based off of who we were interviewing, um, if these stereotypes um, promoted by advertising, if they play a role in how they judge the opposite sex. So if we were interviewing a male, we asked them if it impacted how they judged uh, females. Um, and so we got some interesting uh, results, but the main thing was it didn't, the people we interviewed didn't feel like there was a direct um, impact, but it's kind of hard to tell. This um, one person said that it was hard for them not to have some effect, um, you know, because they saw all these advertisements of perfect-looking women, um, and as a male, it was hard not to kind of, you know, desire women that looked like that. Um, so they felt that yes, they probably did. Um, but the issue is it's kind of hard to tell um, as to what impact that had. The last question we asked was whether or not uh, we should challenge the status quo uh, when it comes to those stereotypes. And I think without uh, exception, everyone said that they thought it was, in fact, a good idea. Um, so those are our interviews that we can do. So for our societal impact, I think that when we started doing the zine, we weren't really sure how we would uh, approach people with with what we were going to research. Um, but we came to the conclusion that we would use an online poll to get sort of a, a large sample size and as effective as many people as possible. We also went to Hunt Library and took interviews that you saw earlier in the PowerPoint, and for those five individuals that participated in them, we think we really impacted what they thought. Um, we also, after we were finished with the zine, we went to Hunt Library again and distributed it to about 60 or 70 people, uh, more or less, and we think that it was really surprising to learn the things that uh, we presented with them with. And it was cool kind of watching their reaction and to what we had written and to just see what they thought about it. Uh, we just wanted to educate the public on body image and hopefully we created an impact on how the public viewed themselves and how they viewed advertisements. Um, I think we as a unit feel that we served a purpose and accomplished our goals. And we really got people to think about the things that they see every day in advertisements that reinforce negative stereotypes about their body. So some of the research that we did, uh, we used Snow Brown and the Seven Detergents by Banu Superman. We also used uh, Science, Sex, and Stereotypical Images in Scientific Advertising by Mary Barbercheck. Depicting women as sex objects in television advertising, effects on body dissatisfaction, Levine, Sweeney, and Wagner. The elastic body image, the effect of television advertising and programming on body image distortions in young women, Myers Phillips in and Frank A. Dicoli. And we also use the video Killing a Softly Four by Gene Kilborn.